Did you know there's a large part of Korea in San Pedro? You're probably wondering what this big item is behind me. It's the Korean Friendship Bell in San Pedro. Even more intriguing, what is this big sort of, I don't know, log thing? It's all part of the Korean Friendship Bell in San Pedro, and it's one of the tourist attractions in Southern California. Come with me as we find out more about this absolutely fascinating bell, and we'll meet the director of this intriguing tourist attraction. Well, John, welcome to Korean Friendship Bell. Uh, my name is Ernest Lee, and I'm the executive director of the Korean Friendship Bell Preservation Committee. Uh, it's a nonprofit 501c3 that was formed in 2006 to create a systematic uh, preservation of not only the structure of the bell, but also its legacy. Why was this particular location chosen out of all the places in Los Angeles? The Korean government was looking for a suitable site for locating this bell, and they chose Los Angeles as the uh, ideal area because of the large Korean population that were here already. Uh, and among the number of locations, this was one of the uh, available spots that had just come into their view because the Interior Department was transferring its control to the city of LA. It's certainly a stunning location. I mean, when you look around, here we are on the top of the peninsula. You get this wonderful vista of Catalina in the background there and PV over there. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful location. Yes, and actually it is an ideal spot uh, for uh, the defense of the harbor, which uh, from... Can I, you said the defense of the harbor? That's correct. <laughs> from 1914 to 1945, this was a location for Fort MacArthur that was actually used uh, for defending the Los Angeles Harbor. I think one of the things that when people come here and they see this enormous bell, I hear people, you know, you listen to them and they say, I wonder how much that weighs. It's a little over 17 tons. 17 tons. <laughs> now, was that cast in Korea or here? How, how did that come about? Well, it was cast in Korea uh, in 1975. Uh, the Korean government decided to give a gift uh, to the American people for its bicentennial in 1976. Uh, but as you know, the Korea was actually just emerging from war and just becoming a developing country. And so they had to go and reach out to any remaining artisans that could cast a bell like this. And in fact, uh, something like that hadn't been done in about a thousand years. A thousand? Woo-hoo! L long time! That's correct. The bell is modeled after the divine bell of King Sung Duk, which was cast in 771 AD. They gathered nine of the best bell masters that they could find and tasked them with building a replica that would be 17 tons. Wow. I know that one of the things that people love is hearing that wonderful sound of the bell being, do you say the bell being rung? That's correct. We, we use the term bell uh, ringing, uh, but it is different. The Korean bell is different uh, than other bells because the clapper is actually on the outside. And there's something unique about the Korean bell because it's just not the bell, but there's a reflector bowl and a sound pipe at the top that as a whole structure, it becomes an instrument. And the reason the bell is rung is because? Well, it is a uh, offering a prayer in the Buddhist tradition. By striking the bell, you bring calm and peace to all that hear it. And uh, the legendary bell of King Song Dug actually had magical powers. And we're hoping that by ringing this bell that we can hope for unity and peace both here in America and in Korea. I know one of the big things in terms of local news was when this bell was refurbished. Um, it was refurbished because? Well, it had been uh, given 37 years ago. And quite frankly, uh, no one in the U.S. had the expertise or the know-how to properly restore it. I don't think you find many bells like this anywhere, do you? No, it's a fairly unique bell uh, anywhere. And it's probably the, the largest bell on this side of uh, the Pacific. 
So you had it restored because I guess given the location, there was, you know, the stuff from the sea and the breezes and I don't know that it rusts, but I'm sure all the elements of the weather must have affected it. Well, the bell is made mostly of the bronze and so it has actually a natural patina process that tends to protect it. However, the sea salt in the air was very damaging as well as the many homing pigeons that have made home. And so it, it was uh, getting corroded quite a bit. I saw the pigeons as we walked up here. Um, <laughs> without getting too graphic, are the pigeons a problem? Pigeons have been a problem, but we have uh, installed a, a bird proofing wires that were approved by the bird proofing wires. <laughs> bird -proofing wires so that they can't just perch anywhere. But it's been a struggle because they're actually homing pigeons. They like to come home to roost where they were hatched. And so they send messages to Korea, right? I think so. <laughs> Message of peace, hopefully. This is um, open throughout the year. I mean, there's no sort of entrance fee and people can come see it any time. It, it is open to everybody, but we do ring it only five times a year. And you ring it at a specific time? Uh, that's correct. We ring it for the New Year's Eve. We ring it also again on the Korean uh, American Day, which is in January. Uh, we also ring it for the Americans' Independence Day, the purpose for which this was given. And uh, we ring it again August 15th, which is the Korean Liberation Day, uh, when the Allied forces, including U.S., defeated the, uh, uh, the Axis forces and brought the World War II to its end. Uh, and then we ring it uh, on the third weekend of every September in celebration of the Constitution Day. If people want more information to uh, close our conversation, if people want information about this, is there a website or anything they can go to? Yes, uh, there is a wonderful website that's uh, being managed by the uh, Los Angeles Department of uh, Recreation and Parks. And there is a specific reference to the uh, Korean Bell, but the Korean Friendship Bell Preservation Committee is also uh, opening its own website, uh, www.kfbpc.org. Okay. Ernest, thank you very much for uh, giving us this fascinating, oh, by the way, I should ask you, that sign above us in, I'm assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming that's not graffiti, it's Korean, what does that say? That is actually a Korean calligraphy, uh, says the belfry of the Friendship Bell. Thank you very much for a very interesting interview, and uh, I urge people to come out here and see this wonderful icon. Ernest, thank you. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for your interest. I just had the extraordinary pleasure and thrill of ringing this gigantic bell, and it brought to mind is there some art or skill in doing this? Well, I think you just need a quiet mind and gentle heart. <laughs> but also, the art is not to push against the bell, but pull and let the gravity do its work. I noticed that you didn't immediately hit the bell, but you sort of went back and then back, and then finally you had a boom, big movement forward. Right. Basically, what we were doing is waiting for the bell to finish its reverberation so that it could actually be a continuous tone rather than it actually interfering what was resonating beforehand. So does, <laughs> does that take years of experience to know how to do that? No, I, I think it's actually something that you, you can do relatively quickly if you have an open ear and an open heart. <laughs> I love your expressions. The other thing that comes to mind is this is such a pleasure and an honor for me. Um, can regular members of the public do this? Well, uh, we usually invite folks during our bell ringing ceremonies to come and ring the bell. And especially uh, on the 4th of July and on August 15th, we recognize some members of the community who were uh, giving uh, their work and their time as volunteers, and we recognize them by inviting them to come and ring the bell with us. Ernest, thank you so much for showing me and instructing me in how to ring this bell, and again, thank you so much for coming down and giving us a real history of this wonderful piece here. And thank you for your interest, and I hope your viewers will enjoy the uh, bell as much as we do. 
I'm sure we will. And so until next time, this is John Clayton in San Pedro with the magnificent Korean Bell of Friendship. Until next time on another edition of Armchair Traveler, thank you for watching in San Pedro. I'll see you next time.